Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our Start or Set podcast. Again, this is our podcast that we talk about the previous week or current NFL players that may be on your fantasy football team and they have an injury. Are they going to start or, i.e., be back playing? Are they going to be sitting? And are you going to need to draft someone else in your fantasy football league? I'm Shannon O'Kelly, physical therapist, and he's Dr. Chris Hawkins, orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist, and we're lucky to have Dr. Hawkins with us. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great today, Shannon. Uh, Other than the weather, you know, now we're officially in uh, Pacific Northwest season. (laughs) Other than that, I'm doing great. Who flipped the switch? That's what I want to know. What happened? Who flipped the switch? It's a matter of just one day we're in the wet season. But, you know, it's kind of nice. We've had a great summer, and here we are in the fall. We're getting to football. It's chilly time. It's soup time. It's uh, those Sunday afternoons where you can just kind of enjoy. A little rainy outside, a little cloudy, but it's always nice to be in front of the TV watching the NFL. Speaking of the NFL, boy, week four. Can you imagine already week four? For. And the amount of injuries I was looking the other day, and geez, Louise, everybody's just getting injured. Even the Seahawks, who had a great game against the Panthers last Sunday, had a lot of injuries. But we're going to talk about a few that you may be interested in. The first one out of the shoot, I got to review this and check in because Monday night, the Bengals played the Rams. And our friend Joe Burrow, you know, he's had this chronic calf problem and it's been lingering, but he played. We kind of thought last week he would play, but maybe questionable. But I did notice during the game when I watched every time he came off the sidelines, boy, he was getting treatment. And then that's a lingering problem. I mean, I wonder if they're going to sit him. I'm not sure they have this week, but would he be a play start? What do you think? Yeah, I think I think he's kind of declared himself, you know, he's he's wants to lead by example with that team. Um, I think he's been lucky in that he has a great uh, wide receiver, um, you know, core there. Yeah. And Jamar Chase gave him a great opportunity. If you watch that game, yeah. he didn't have to drive off of his leg. He just kind of floated passes into an area and and Jamar just like duped his guy and got there and made the catches so he was able to be effective as like a game manager and I think he's going to do his best because they need him they need him to win games and you know they were in danger of going zero and three um so you know we've talked about that uh gastrocnemius Mm -hmm. injury that strain that he initially suffered in preseason so now we're seeing that sort of lingering issue um where if he was like an end rusher or he was a running back yeah they be sitting him for sure because he'd be unable to do what is right. needed but i think he's gonna as long as he doesn't get tripped up as long as he doesn't have to sprint away from somebody and just you know gives up the sack i think he will he'll be a play and and i i think he's going to be important for them um and important for your fantasy team to keep him in yeah absolutely i mean you're exactly right i agree 100 he's needed uh he is um really important at that position that's the quarterback position we know how important that is he's never been i don't know has he ever been really a mobile quarterback I've always felt he was a pocket passer but he seems to be doing well and they are treating him uh, between every series so he's a play Joe Burrows will be a play this week going into week four here's one um, this this uh, gentleman you know wow okay torn ACL this is Mike Williams wide receiver uh, Los Angeles Chargers I mean super important uh, uh, part of their team he catches a lot of balls he tore his ACL he's out for the season most likely yeah, he had he had that type of an injury where when they showed in in slow mo, it was it was really a low contact. He was just sort of getting tackled, and he just braced himself, and you kind of saw that that right knee buckle um, as he was going down. So that was obviously the concern. You know, was it a ligament injury? Every now and then, you might have like a like a like a bony injury, like a little tibial plateau injury. Um, but he had to get carted off the field, wasn't able to put weight on it. So um, obviously. Super Super concerning, and you know we've always touched on the importance of that ligament for stability. And you know you just don't see really any pro athletes nowadays trying to kind of come back without surgery for that. So obviously it's an end to his season, and he's been snake bit a few times. He's had some big injuries over the years, and he's getting a little bit older. So um, hopefully he can make a full recovery and come back. But he won't be back this season, and uh, and I might be a little. A little leery about keeping him if you've got what you know if you've got a dynasty league where you keep people year to year I might actually be a little worried about using your your dynasty designation on him because um, this may be what what kind of tilts him into the twilight of his career 
Yeah, it's a tough injury. I mean, you know, in any ACL and any athlete is tough. But I mean, at his age, like you were just describing. Hey, let me ask you real quick. You know, you mentioned, I mean, a lot of these ACL injuries, when you watch these things happen on TV, it's always kind of interesting that a lot of times these are non-contact injuries. These are deceleration, meaning the athlete is either changing positions or directions or slowing down and that knee kind of just subluxors or whatever, and that, that ACL is torn. It doesn't take a lot of uh, kind of migration between that tibia and that femur to tear that ligament. Uh, maybe describe the mechanics of that just real quick for our listeners because, again, these are non-contact majority time. Yeah, so so again, it, we see it in all athletes, and as you know, we, we see it in a higher percentage of, of female athletes. And, and so one of the ideas behind why these non-contact injuries occur is just that the, you look at static restraints, which are like the ligaments that are going bone to bone. And then you've got your dynamic restraints, you know, the way the muscles Mm -hmm. contract and control things. And so in a situation like this with non-contact, it's like whatever position his knee was going into, those muscles did not contract or fire quick enough to sort of slow down right. the motion between the bones. And so I use the analogy with my patients where I go, hey, listen, if you're, if you're a car driving down a steep hill and you don't have good brakes, you're going to slow yourself down by sort of scraping the guardrail if there's a guardrail. Yeah. And so the guardrail are the ligaments. Yeah, exactly. And so if you don't have good brakes, if you hit the guardrail hard enough, you're going to break the guardrail and go over the edge. Yeah. Hello, so, Prudential. So yeah, so, yeah. So so when when I tell them to, to go see you, Shannon, and get better and get stronger yep. after their ligaments reconstructed, exactly. it's all about getting, it's all about getting those brakes, those muscles firing not just strongly but firing well like yep. in good control exactly and in the right right way so that's where you know i i love when we can talk about those things that show people you know how important it is you know you surgery can fix some things but a lot of it is the work that goes on with the physical therapist and 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 building all that stuff back up again and that's why you look at these like nine and 12 month recoveries for these big ligament reconstructions absolutely i mean it's so important post-surgery you know to really get those muscles firing and they you know people have to understand i mean they have to those muscles have to fire fast particularly in an athletic situation when you're cutting stopping and starting that's quick reaction so he is out for the season here's a guy you know it, it's almost taken me four weeks to really understand where everybody's landed I mean after the, all the trades and the movement last season I mean Derek Carr I mean he's playing at the New Orleans Saints right now they had a 17 to 0 lead against the Packers and lost that game Derek Carr was injured I believe sometimes late uh, second quarter maybe or first half but on video, when you watch that, this is a typical injury for a quarterback. He was wrapped up by the defensive tackle, slammed down on his shoulder, and now he has what we call an AC joint separation. I'm not sure what grade it is, but I assume he is out. But you tell me what you think. Yeah, so so the key thing I think there, Shannon, is is which side it obviously yes. happened on it. It happened on his throwing side. Yep, so that's right. I agree. I think he'll be out. Um, they do, however, you know, they reported that it'll be a week to week decision. So for me, even though they haven't characterized the grade of injury, that usually means that's a grade one sprain, which means the ligaments were not fully disrupted. They were stretched around that joint. And so it's all a matter of like discomfort, letting the swelling go down and seeing what he can tolerate doing. If he weren't a quarterback, if he was a lineman in the old school NFL, a lot of times they would give him a shot going into to the game with mm-hmm. a local anesthetic in there for a grade one injury and they would let him play with it they would just say hey this will make you feel better for two hours or so and then tomorrow you got to ice the heck out of it and and uh we'll get you back but with it being his throwing shoulder um you know i think he'll sit this week and they'll they'll have Jameis winston i think that's yep. who came in for right. him you're right hopefully Hopefully with a week of, of practice, he will be a little more effective yeah. and they won't see that type of collapse where they get no more points after he leaves the game. Yeah, that was uh, that was an amazing uh, comeback by the Packers, 17-0, to zero, and they came back and won it. Um, you know, these AC joints, we talk about these a lot. We, we Like you said, we like to, you know, rate these or grade them, grade one, grade two, grade three. Obviously a grade one, that joint, uh, as you know, and I know personally, 
that joint when it's irritated, that AC joint is painful. And if you have to throw on your throwing side, I can't imagine doing that a week later because that is a painful. So Derek Carr most likely out. Keep an eye on him. He may be out for more than just one week. It may take two, could take three. So we'll keep an eye on that. But he's for sure, I think, out this coming week. Agree? Yep, absolutely. Okay, great. Saquon Barkley. We talked about him, uh, I think, a couple shows ago. I think at one time, you know, he big, big time running back, New York Giants. Boy, they could use him back. You know, I think when we originally talked about him, they were thinking it was a low ankle sprain or the typical ankle sprain. But now I think recently it's come out that he has a high ankle sprain, totally different rehab, totally different type of inju- injury, totally different amount of tissue injured, a little bit longer on the rehab stint, a little more rest, a little more biology for healing. Talk about a high ankle sprain if that's what he actually has. Yeah, so so that's that situation where the the two lower um, bones in your leg, in the lower leg, the tibia and the fibula, are typically held together by some thick tissue between them called your syndesmosis. And so, mm-hmm. um, when you get that high ankle sprain, it it sprains or stretches that tissue between it, so it tries to peel those two bones apart from each other, and so that that compromises that stability even more so at the ankle joint itself. And so, you know, like you said, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing that they changed up his reported diagnosis. So I'm, I would think that this is a situation where he just wasn't responding the way they expected with a low ankle sprain. Um, but he wasn't having a lot of tenderness higher up. And so they're kind of downgrading him to a high ankle sprain because of the time involved. So I still think he's somebody we, you, you can pay attention. They, they had a short week this past week. Now they go all the way to Monday night. So they kind of have almost like a mini bye week here. And I, it's for far enough away that if he's on your fantasy team, I think you wait till Sunday. And if he practiced, you know, over the weekend, um, then there's a chance he will will play this week. Yeah. Okay. There's a. I, I mean, so I'm I'm gonna give him a fifty fifty shot, just knowing those high ankle sprains and whether he's practiced and how much he's practiced, what he's capable of doing. Obviously, being a running back, you know, the Giants are in one of those situations. I think they have to start winning some games, right? I mean, they've just really, I mean, struggle a little bit. He's important. Uh, are you gonna say fifty fifty this Monday night? Yep, I think 50-50, especially now, if, mm-hmm. if he practices this weekend, um, if he practices, I assume they'll have a regular practice Saturday with a Monday game. If he practices on Saturday, I would put him up at, at a, you know, a 90% chance he'll play. Yeah, okay, good, good. He's important. Who do they have Monday night? I can't remember. I know it is Monday night. I mean, do you remember who they have? Um, uh, we, I knew you were going to ask me that. Yeah, it's going to escape me right yeah, now. Yeah, escaping me too. Okay, here's a new injury. We thought we'd talk about Justice Hill running back. He's got uh, something going on with his toe. I don't know a lot about it. Just kind of saw something, but I thought, heck, we should talk about a toe injury because we haven't seen one in a little while. And that big toe, that first ray we call it in the business, Man, I tell you what, that's an important aspect if you're an athlete and you have to roll over, push off, start, stop, start, cut, I mean, changing directions. That big toe is pretty important. Tell us what you think's going on here. Yeah, so you've got a big, thick piece of tissue underneath that that ball of your toe called your plantar plate, which Love kind it. of stabilizes th- those two bones from shifting. And so if, the, if that's torn, that's the true turf toe, mm-hmm. and that's the tough injury where, you know, you can't generate any power when you try to do it. Those bones actually shift, and so when they're out of place, you can't really generate any, any, uh, any contraction or power across that area. Um, the good news is, is he's been kind of like easy into a little bit of practice so it's most likely he has discomfort there they probably imaged him that shows he doesn't have a tear because they haven't completely shut him down and put him in a boot which would be the 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 go-to if he has a true acute turf toe injury so i think it'll pay it'll pay dividends to see you know how he practices but i think this is one of those ones where you know we've talked about the soft tissue injury if you push yourself too much you may set yourself back and make it worse. So I would almost put him in the 50-50 range as well for this week. Yeah, yeah. You know, the other night, I, I can't remember what game I was watching. Someone came off, and it was kind of interesting because I think they were checking him out and seeing what injury it was, and they ended up putting a plate in his shoe. And I immediately, when I saw that happening, I said, that guy has a toe injury. But I think he was an offensive lineman. He's not a uh, He wasn't a position player that has to – be agile and stop starting cutting all that stuff but that toe injury you know I think I mentioned this one time we were talking about the toe I 
if I remember right, I think Jack Ham, linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers, back in the days when Steelers were the Iron Curtain and multiple championships, I think Jack Ham had to retire. Was it because of turf toe, if I remember right? I mean, chronic turf toe, I can't be be certain, but I think I remember that. You remember? You, you, yeah, you, you, yeah, I think you're right about that. And and a little more more recent, you know, was uh, that was a that was a, a a recurring problem toward the end of uh, Deion Sanders' career as well. Oh, right, um, where he he was struggling with that. And and the only interesting thing about that, obviously, for completely different reasons, but that poor guy, you know, has ended up with partial amputations yep. to to his toes and his feet. You know, so you know, it's kind of an interesting interesting thing. Dion's feet have not treated him well. Boy, they did when he was an athlete, though. Man. Yeah, well, in the beginning, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that guy, Flash, or whatever. I mean, at prime time. I mean, he was he was amazing. Baseball, football player. Now, a great. Yeah, you know, I think he's a. I think he's a great coach. He, you know, I like to watch coaches. Um, uh, and I, I really appreciate the connectivity he seems to have with his players, and I think he's a player's coach. So good luck to to uh, Coach Prime. He had a, took a big. Uh, <laughs> a big a big knock against Oregon. Boy, Oregon looks good as far as collegiate football goes. Last one here, uh, talking about collegiate football. Here we go. We got a we got a rookie quarterback, uh, really successful at the uh, great football program of Alabama. Bryce Young, Carolina Carolina Panthers. Last week they played the Seattle Seahawks at uh, at, at in Seattle, and um, I believe uh, uh, Andy Dalton ended up playing because they sat. Bryce Young, he has an ankle, and they're sitting him. So it must be something that's taken more time. Yeah, the interesting thing about him, if, if you go back and try to look at his injury, he was he was scrambling when he pulled up um, in like, mm-hmm. his last game that he was playing, and and it actually looks like he kind of like essentially um, over flexed his ankle. So he didn't really roll it. It's like he drove it a little oh. too far, like drove his, you know, the front of his foot up towards his, his lower leg. Yeah. And so, you know, they haven't really given him a diagnosis. And so I think it's probably a situation where he had essentially a, like a, almost a bony contusion, like an oh. impingement, impingement between like his talus, yep. which is the bone just below the ankle and, and that coming up and hitting the front of the tibia. And yep. so, you know, that causes swelling of the soft tissue causes the capsule, which is the lining around it to get tight. And so all of those things kind of compromise stability and stuff like that. And a lot of times, unlike the ankle sprain, you're not waiting for the ligaments to heal, but you're waiting for, you know, the explosion, the bomb to go down um, to the point where, you know, he can start doing things. And that's why I think they've been, uh, you know, he's young. They're not a great team. Yeah, They want to get him experience, but I also, I also don't think they want him to be chipped up this early in his career. So uh, Dalton's a pretty capable backup. So um, the hot off the press is he did practice today. Bryce did practice today. So this afternoon. So I think they're going to, um, you know, upgrade him and and try to get him out there. But I I think I'd be worried if I have him on my fantasy team that he could come out of the game at any point. Yeah. So, I mean, are are you saying, I mean, it it sounds to me and what I'm thinking too is another one of our players that may be a 50-50 guy um this week yeah. you know maybe starts a little bit gives him a chance maybe a couple series but if he has pain I agree I mean he's young he's a rookie he's talented I mean they're not a great team right now I mean they might get better the season goes but I don't think you want to get him hurt early on so he may be a 50-50 keep an eye on him for this week and obviously keep an eye on him for next week that is our uh list of players Dr. Hawkins wonderful again great job it's great to talk to you I always I always learn something and talking to you i just uh discovered that ligaments are like a car going down a grade and rubbing against a, a guardrail so that's really cool thank you for the uh, edu- thank you for the education all you fantasy yeah. football players out there wishing you a great week four we'll be back on next week talking about again injuries in the nfl to your maybe fantasy football player and is that player going to start and assist or start or sit uh I'm Shannon O'Kelly, physical therapist, and he's Dr. Hawkins, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine specialist. You all have a great weekend. See ya.